What's that? I asked, pointing to a protuberance on the outside of the box. I did not ask what the box was, as it was quite clearly a box. The gun, Rover said, with excited pride. The gun. To shoot the cat. To shoot the cat? Or to not shoot the cat, depending on the photon. The photon? Yeah, it's Schrodinger's great Gedanken experiment. You see, there's a little emitter here. At zero time, five seconds after the lid of the box is closed, it'll emit one photon. The photon will strike a half-silver mirror. The quantum mechanical probability of the photon passing through the mirror is exactly one half, isn't it? So, if the photon passes through, the trigger will be activated and the gun will fire. If the photon is deflected, the trigger will not be activated and the gun will not fire. Now, you put the cat in, and the cat is in the box. You close the lid, you go away, and you stay away. What happens? Rover's eyes were bright. The cat gets hungry? <laughs> the cat gets shot. Or not shot, he said, seizing my arm. Though not, fortunately, in his teeth. But the gun is silent. Perfectly silent. The box is soundproof. There's no way to know whether or not the cat has been shot until you lift the lid of the box. There's no way. Do you see how central this is to the whole of quantum theory? Before zero time, the whole system, on the quantum level or on your own level, is nice and simple. But after zero time, the whole system can be represented only by a linear combination of two waves. We cannot predict the behavior of the photon. And thus, once it has behaved, we cannot predict the state of the system it has determined. We cannot predict it. God plays dice with the world. So it is beautifully demonstrated that if you desire certainty, any certainty, you must create it for yourself. How? Hmm. <laughs> By lifting the lid of the box, of course, Rover said, looking at me with sudden disappointment, perhaps a touch of suspicion, like a Baptist who finds he has been talking church matters not to another Baptist as he thought, but a Methodist, or even, God forbid, an Episcopalian, to find out whether the cat is dead or not. Do you mean, I said carefully, that until you lift the lid of the box, the cat has neither been shot nor not been shot? Yeah, Rover said, radiant with relief, welcoming back to the fold. Or, maybe, <laughs> you know, both. But why does opening the box and looking reduce the system back to one probability, either live cat or dead cat? Why don't we get included in the system when we lift the lid off the box? There was a pause. How? Rover barked, distrustfully. Well, we would involve ourselves in this system, you see. The superposition of the two waves. There's no reason why it should only exist inside an open box, is there? So when we come to look, there we would be, you and I both looking at a live cat, and both looking at a dead cat, you see? A dark cloud lowered on Rover's eyes and brow. He barked twice in a subdued, harsh voice and walked away. With his back turned to me, he said in a firm, sad tone, you must not complicate the issue. It's complicated enough. Are you sure? He turned, nodding, and spoke pleadingly. Listen, it's all we have. The box, truly it is. The box and the cat, and they're here. The box, the cat, at last. Put the cat in the box, will you? Will you let me put the cat in the box? No, I said, shocked. Please, please, just for a minute, just for half a minute. Please let me put the cat in the box. Why? I can't stand this terrible uncertainty, he said and burst into tears. I stood with some indecision. Though I felt sorry for the poor son of a bitch, I was about to tell him gently, no, when a curious thing happened. The cat walked over to the box, sniffed around it, lifted his tail and sprayed on a corner to mark his territory, and then lightly, with marvelous fluid ease, leapt into it, his yellow tail just flicked the edge of the lid as he jumped, and it closed, falling into place with a soft, decisive click. "'The cat is in the box,' I said. "'The cat is in the box,' Rover repeated in a whisper, falling to his knees. "'Oh, wow! Oh, wow! Oh, wow!' There was silence then, a deep silence. 
We both gazed, I afoot, Rover kneeling at the box. No sound. Nothing happened. Nothing would happen. Nothing ever would happen until we lifted the lid of the box. Like Pandora, I said in a weak whisper. I could not quite recall Pandora's legend. She had let all the plagues and evil out of the box, of course, but there had been something else, too. After all the devils were let loose, something quite different, quite unexpected, had been left. What had been left? Hope? A dead cat? I could not remember. Impatience welled up in me. I turned on Rover, glaring. He returned the look with expressive brown eyes. You can't tell me dogs haven't got souls. Just exactly what are you trying to prove? I demanded. That the cat will be dead or not dead, he murmured submissively. Certainty. All I want is certainty. To know for sure that God does play dice with the world. I looked at him for a while with fascinated incredulity. Whether he does or doesn't, I said, do you think he's going to leave you a note in the box? I went to the box with a rather dramatic gesture, flung the lid back. Rover staggered up from his knees, gasping to look. The cat, of course, was not there. Rover neither barked, nor fainted, nor cursed, nor wept. He really took it very well. Where is the cat? he asked at last. Where is the box? Here. Where is here? Here is now. We used to think so, I said. But really, we should use larger boxes. He gazed about in mute bewilderment and did not flinch even when the roof of the house was lifted off just like the lid of the box, letting in the unconscionable, inordinate light of the stars. He had just time to breathe. Oh, wow. I have identified the note that keeps sounding. I checked it on the mandolin before the glue melted. It is the note A, the one that drove the composer Schumann mad. It is a beautiful, clear tone. Much clearer now that the stars are visible. I shall miss the cat. I wonder if he ever found what it was we lost.